Hey everybody, this is uh, Sylvie and Kevin. Sylvie. And Kevin of the Muay Thai Bones podcast. Uh, if you follow our podcast, um, we do long form kind of thought provoking takes on Muay Thai. And this is a slow motion film largely uh, that I shot on of Sylvie's pad work. This is not a, this is not pad work porn. This is no um, awesome demo of perfect technique or badassness. I wanted beast to- Beast mode. Beast mode. <laughs> I wanted to really capture, if I could, some of the emotions that go on in like long form pad work experiences. Um, Sylvie's been training with Pinu for five and a half years in yeah. Thailand. And a lot of things happen between the trainer and the student, um, especially when many years have gone by. Like there's a kind of quiet conversation that goes on. And I, I wanted to film and slow it down so we could maybe start to get into and see these kind of ripples that happen in pad work, um, not just like highlight demo pad work which is yeah. also can be fun, but uh, so maybe we're gonna talk over the slow motion and kind of Just give it a little think context. about what's happening, um, but a lot of it is right there. Yeah. This is my trainer, Karunu. And as Kevin said, we've been working together for five and a half years. Very recently, I've started working on eye contact, which was incredibly hard for me to do. For, for many years, that was like, no, I'm not gonna do I that. I couldn't do it even for a second while people were asking mm. me to do it. Well, what's happening here? Uh, you're explaining a He complained difficulty. about my teeth, and I could tell it was a problem with my feet, like my balance was off. And so I'm showing him and why does he just kick you? <laughs> well, he's showing me a low kick that he does differently than I do. I have a little jump on my low kick that he doesn't want. But I'm bouncing to loosen up because I can feel that I'm tense, which makes me off balance. Mm. He does the eye contact thing too. <laughs> but you can see that we're focused on each other and he's instructing me, but there are all these things going on in the background that's diesel noy. The king of knees just strolling through the background. <laughs> he seems a little frustrated, um, like he was trying to get some energy out of you, and, and he does these look-offs that are kind of like timeouts almost. Yeah. He can tell when I'm frustrated as well. That's his put more power in your punch face. He's trying to get you to redline it a little bit, it seems. And you're a little bit in your head about whether you're doing the right technique or not. Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts and struggles that go on that make everything more difficult than it needs to be because pad work with Pinu is already physically difficult. Yeah, he's a very fatiguing um, pad man. Look at him just fall into that position. It's really beautiful. The transitions to me um, are gorgeous. This is a turn he's been working with me on for a long time. I'm pretty happy that that turned out the way it did. I like you controlling the left arm. Not only the neck, but the opposite arm, which is something you've been kind of working on. Oh, and this is so beautiful. You switch which side of the neck you're gonna control, and instead of framing up the opposite arm, you just swim under it. Yeah, and he has a balance and a back and forth between um, allowing me things um, that I've earned, he doesn't like give them to me, um, versus resisting them and making them incredibly hard to do. But you can see me look down in that moment. Yeah. I've just become very internal. Yeah. And now there's the eye contact as I like come back into it. I 
gift or my moment. I'm listening to him, he's telling me something. God, I love seeing how slow, like I can see in your face. It's one of those things when you slow it down, you can see the errors in the technique, but you can also see the Any beauty ideas? in the technique, like where the balance is and all the emotion and thoughts that play out at the same time become visible. Yeah, it's like slowing down water ripples or something, which otherwise would just be rushing water. Uh, in the background is Angie, uh, the first visibly trans fighter of Peeney Stadium. She really is a historic fighter. She has And then there's Diesel Noy in yeah. the same ring. <laughs> and this little kid's getting a private with Peacock in the background. It's one of the things I love about this film is um, surrounding the pad work is the life of the gym. Like you which can is, see little things. Which is so normal. Like it's, it's incredibly mundane just people going about the everything else like while pad work is happening it's not special it's daily it's twice a day actually there's Kiro doing her endless teeps on the uh, metal bar the metal pole behind Pinu um, female fighter who came and has been like super inspired by you. There you are with your eye contact. You can see in Pinu's face too, in the slow motion, when strikes have impact or not. I love this correction. I struggle with this because of Pinu's height. Um, the angles are very different for him than they are for me because he's the tall one and I'm the short one. What he's teaching me is something that Nam Sok Noi also taught me, but with the angle of someone so much taller, it's very difficult and I get down on myself for the difficulty of it. You're also not doing the actual technique, which is you need to turn your thumb down mm -hmm. in order to get that elbow pointed vertical. It's just the window of that movement is very small when you're at your geometry. These pauses are amazing. Yeah, it's crazy that they look like we become still for a second. Or longer than a second. See that release mm. of frustration and being and, disdain, <laughs> and he's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> the thing is, the head kick, the head kick, head kick from, from Angie. Angie in the background. The thing is that um, you do read all of these little moments, these little moments of introversion and disappointment, and all of these things do read in regular time but they're flashes. It's like um, people who are skilled in human lie detecting, like mm. where someone glances or mm. what they do with their hands or that kind of thing. He's totally eye contacting you. Look at that. When I first started doing it, he thought it was very weird, but then he like picked up on what I was doing and he totally got into it. And I think that his um, assistance in that process made a big difference. Look at um, how you laugh right after getting kicked. <laughs> a disappointing moment, but you've learned to laugh. Yeah. He's showing me how to 
slam the kick. I kind of like flopped it on him. He wants me to throw or get out of the way and then kick back really hard. Look at Dismoy looking this little kid in this private. The kid's only five or six. He's, but he's into it. Yeah. He's almost watching it. Little spin around. Yeah. And the hair fix. I was surprised in watching this video at how many women uh, are in the space at this moment. There's Angie and Nan are sparring, and me and Caro, and then uh, there's a Korean schoolgirl who comes and trains who's sitting on the edge of the ring watching us, as well as a um, Thai college student who comes and just kind of clinches and spars and does her own work. This is late in training. Yeah, All the men late. have kind of like flushed out of the area. Caro says she loves watching my pad work with Pinu because it's relentless, which you don't get the feel for that in slow motion because you see all of these pauses and breaks and hesitations. Um, but in looking at it, it is pretty nonstop in terms of do not take that break, do not take that space. Really? I see so many quiet moments in it. But you're probably feeling viscerally every movement in your body. I'm right. looking at all the transitions, mm. that everything is transitioning into something else. There's no like, step back, walk mm. around for a minute. Mm. There's Sun with his towel walking in the background. He's about to get a um, hot water, uh, massage. what would you call it, massage. Yeah. The boys are getting ready for fights and they do this after training. see my head tucked down as I'm like moving into a close range <laughs> and I got blocked out. <laughs> he wants my arm to um, control his arm immediately with that knee. Slight look off. This is when he's upset with you. Like you wouldn't see these, but you can see them in the slow motion. And here's Crudan with his hot water, right? Yeah, that's boiled water to add to the tepid water for the boys' massages. Or you're on the banana peel. He's making me control his arms in my movements. Like actually turn him. He gives you, I love these like um, pad wax on the yeah, side to, to simulate knee. knees, yeah. I'm getting frustrated with myself because I'm trying to make space for that knee, but my upper body comes oh. back with me. Look at that beautiful turn of a very strong guy. Look at the non-tension in his hands though, mm. like. That's that slight allowance, slight resistance. I'm complaining about it. <laughs> the way you let go when you're frustrated is this weird kind of like hot stove. Like I don't want to touch that. There's so much emotional arc in this. It's, it blew my mind when I was watching this film. Again, he wants like sharp strikes, punctuation, like punctuated, yeah. maybe almost slightly angered um, ends of your strikes, right? Yeah. I was kind of mad one day, um, and I threw a body punch, and he stopped and was like, "Throw body punches like that." <laughs> Didn't be like, "I'm mad at you." <laughs> Beautiful. You're a little bit off balance there. Yeah. Falling to the outside of his arm. <laughs> and we hit Kevin. <laughs> the 
but it's actually kind of beautiful. <laughs> the camera Dis having to rewrite itself. The disorientation is just like pad work, right? Yeah. You're not in control of every moment. That's one of the most beautiful things about this film, is you're not in control every moment no. in high level pad work and not even emotionally in control. Of yourself or your partner. Yeah. This tries to refocus. Look at how consistently I have to stay in that space. It's too far away for what I need, but it's closer than I used to be. And it's constantly closing. Like, I'm always coming forward. It's one of the hard things is to, to not take pad work distance. Mm -hmm. Bob. <laughs> That's right though, a, a nod is pretty good. Yeah. That's me knowing what the problem is without him having to tell me. Just those four boys in the background appearing changes the space already. Like they're separate, but I don't it, know. where are you? The boys getting to? the massage uh, there all sitting there waiting and the girls are sitting on the side of the ring it totally has a different feel to me than what than it did when it was just the girls like it was a female space for a minute oh i think they were there in the beginning mm -hmm. but you didn't see them when yeah. they were over here yeah. him position himself he's like <laughs> he's illegally looping his arm. And then he smacked me to have me drag him off, but yeah. he's holding you on He's not going to let you, and you're going to get frustrated here. Oh, that was a good knee, though. <laughs> Arms down. Followed by the, your frustration. That was the bell. There's like a... This is so wonderful to me. He shows me how, oh, see how his hand like catches me as it's pulling rather than even having grabbed me in the first place? But as he's pulling you, you're emotionally falling already. Like it's this incredible moment of technique and emotional moment. But you do that to your opponent too. Yeah, right? but he's making you suffer it. Muay Thai is not yeah. just moves, it's dominance. Yeah. Here you try to right your head, like your posture. He's showing how even if they're resisting you, you can pull. And boom. Wow. That was not a light knee. <laughs> For those that can't read lives, that's fog. <laughs> <laughs> he wants a quicker response, like when my hand touches his neck, it should already be pulling. I just, I see the waves of emotion that are in you, just like reverberations of your inner world. It's all the time. That's why yeah. training is so intense. That was one round. One round. And you see all that goes into like it. It's like five rounds. So here you see how all of that disappears. This is the thing, when you go into real time, all those emotions are still happening. All those looks, glances away, moments of hesitation, all of them still happen, but they become unreadable. You're also coming off of your disappointment of the last round. This is the next round. And you are pissed. <laughs> you are like, I am, I collapsed a little bit. Yeah. And now this is my response. Yeah. And he's coming back needing your energy. He's feeling your energy. Yeah. And he's like, I'm bringing it back to you. Can we known each other for five years, so all of this is... Uh, one of the earliest things he said to me when we came to the gym when I was tired is uh, everyday body not the same. 
and this is kind of a like every moment the mind is not the same. But this is that continuation that I was talking about, how the moments where you pause or take a step back have to be so short. Like he wants me just immediately pushing that arm up. So as I try to grab his arm or grab his neck, he's folding my arm down. See how I grabbed his neck and he came to grab mine. He wants me to immediately resist it and do this banana peel. Which in slow motion would be a move. <laughs> and at regular pace is a response. It's like instinctual. You can hear him yelling at me. <laughs> He's actually calling for me to be more relentless. Um, he's not yelling so much about power, but he wants all those slight pauses to come out. Not in a like, moimua, endlessly throwing things, but in a like, I am not taking breaks way. Mm. Like here I take way too long to turn him and he's because you're thinking about that left knee, which yeah, he's hitting you've me. had a thing about pulling that left leg back properly. Yeah. So you're I'm trying to think about it yeah. instead of just doing it. Yeah. But this round is more or less the same as the round before, but the difference in pace to me is unbelievable in terms of what you pick up on, what you see. It's almost like you watched the same movie twice and thought you watched two movies. I think you're more relentless in this round, though. I think you're pissed um, at what, how the last one ended, and you're like, I'm bringing an emotion. <laughs> to you're, you're bringing an emotion, an additional emotion, which is one of the beautiful things about Muay Thai development, is you have to learn emotionally how to respond. How to recover How to really recover. Quickly. A lot of fighting is just recovery. It's not performance so much as recovery. So he wants me to do 50 of those jumping knees, and I can't with my right knee, so he says just do 20 on the left. But look at him, like, position himself to just take these as a drill. Why couldn't you with your right knee as injured? Uh, I had a, a pain on my right knee. Um, I think I hit someone in the hip day before or something. He had to bring his pad in, that's good. That means that my knees were going through his going belly through pad belly a little pad, bit. Yeah. But look at his expressions as it's like weathering this for my benefit to tire me more and have me deal with that. I see in this, you through the work, processing all that emotion of the first slow motion round. Like, and here you're asking for correction. Yeah. With, rather than him correcting you. Because there are two pads, so I don't know which one to hit. Like, mm. sometimes the top pad is just capping mm. your knee to keep it from sliding up, but he actually wants me hitting the upper one. The knees are like um, uppercuts. Anyone who teaches uppercuts teaches you to kind of like angle the punch up into the ribs so it kind of stabs upward, and these knees do that too. There's a, a lift or a rising element on impact. But as much as it's difficult for me because of Pinu's size with those angles, because of the size difference, I can go 100% on things like this. 
Yeah, you could do that with Chicken Man <laughs> other people saying it's about being small it's not him mm. in particular but having having size um, disparity like this like if I were a huge dude oh if you're a huge yeah you couldn't do this I just I'm just amazed at the like way you're processing the emotions through just fatigue and technique here I love the little like hop over rhythm that you do from bag work through that little left Mm -hmm. That little left foot step over. Yeah. <laughs> but again, by slowing it down, seeing all the thoughts and frustrations and the good ones and the bad ones, like seeing them play out slowly, it's this like how much is compacted into every minute every of training. Second. And you train for hours a day. Every second. Like. And that's your uh, knockout knee, or your left knee, yeah. that you're training on. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to pad work. <laughs> Welcome to Muay Thai. So if you... Um, Enjoy our content. Check out the Muay Thai Bones podcast, which is these epic three-hour podcasts we do. We'll put a link in the description. Um, or check out the Sylvie's Muay Thai Library project where you train with legends and crews from all over Thailand. We've got over 80 hours documented. Just the, it will be the Bible of Muay Thai. Link like, is in the description.